What is going on, everybody, and welcome to the December 2018 Investor's Digest Market Up to You, brought to you by John Barr with Prime Homes. So we got the November numbers overview with the average sales price of 259834 which is a 1.4% increase year-over-year, year. meaning sales 207250 which is a 3.6% increase year-over-year. Total sales at 2,408, which is a 3.6% increase the year, the, from this time last year. Average rental price ticked up 2.16% from this time last year to 1,438. Employment, unemployment, run a little behind. Uh, no surprise, it's a government agency where I get this information. So it is kind of taking a little bit to get the updated information. But the employment is at 1.14 million, which is a 1.5%. 8% increase from this time last year, which is great. As long as we keep adding people and employment going up, that means there's more competition and San Antonio is growing. When we gained just shy of 6,500 jobs from uh, this uh, the previous month. Unemployment setting at a historical low of 3.08%, which I think the national average is sitting at just under three or right at four. So doing great there. And compared to Texas, San Antonio is lower and lower than the nation. So People are working here in San Antonio, which means that is going to increase wages and bring more people here to San Antonio because jobs are coming here because we have competition for them and low unemployment. Uh, and this is a 0.21% decrease from this time last month. Months of inventory. Now remember, this is what investors use to gauge the overall health of the market. Now, six months is the average uh, months of inventory between a buyer and a seller market. And you're going to see this month's inventory multiple times throughout this presentation uh, for those of you that are new. So what it means is 4.14% or not percent, 4.14 months of inventory basically means if no new houses got listed, every house would be absorbed. If we continued buying houses at the, continue, the same pace, everything would be gone in just, just a little over four months. And remember, the average is six months. So any time that number stops, you see it below six, means there's good economic forces for prices to rise because of the supply and demand. That means there is more demand for houses than there is supply. So that is driving prices up to try to find its equilibrium. And we have been rising for quite some time here in San Antonio because we have been well below that six months for a very long time. Historically, December is the worst month for... Uh, real estate as far as meaning sales prices start to fall and increase ticks up because not that many people are trying to move and buy in December during the cold months and with the holidays. So now this puts uh, the meaning sales price on a graph so you can really kind of see uh, how far San Antonio has really come since coming out of the last recession. Prices really bottomed out right here in 2011 and have kind of been rising up from there. And what you're looking at here is the cycles that real estate goes through from the winter months to the hot months. Right down here in the bottom is kind of your January, December time frame. And then it kind of ticks up all the way through the summertime through July, August and kind of falls down again into the winter. You get a little blip in December because that's people trying to get into houses and closing in December. So these are offers that are kind of put in the Thanksgiving, November time frame, closing in December. So a little extra competition of people trying to buy before the end of the year and the holiday season. So you will always see, not always, but typically see an uptick in December falls off for January, and then takes off all the way in through the summertime. Now, the, everything's kind of gotten a little shakier, you can kind of, these last couple of years, because you can see coming in uh, 2012 was up, down, 13 up, down, up, down, and then it continued to kind of do that up, down. But here, in these last two years, we've kind of, it just kind of shot up, dropped down, picked back up, back down. It's gotten a little more volatile in the median sales prices, which is no surprise to see when we've been on such an economic expansion uh, that we have been on for some time. Monthly rents kind of follow the same thing. It kind of drops off in December, January and rises all the way through the summertime and then falls back off. And this one doesn't really get as much of a tick up in December like the median sales prices do. But this is something that I use and I try to structure all my leases. And I know a lot of other people that do the exact same thing that they try to get their leases to end right here 
uh, the March-April time frame. So if you got to do a 30-day renovation or something of the sort, you can get it back on the market and get yourself another 11, 12-month lease. So you're right here to catch this nice appreciation bump when everybody's moving around. And that's actually happening to me right now. We had a tenant move out, needed to do some repairs, and they broke their lease and moved out early. And now we're having a hard time getting it rented because it in the middle of winter time nobody competition where the average rental price over the last summer was thirteen hundred dollars and we're sitting at 1250 and nobody's renting it because there's just not so much competition just not that many people looking to rent so i'm looking to get that thing leased and have that lease only last through a couple months march april or make it like a 15 month lease so it ends right here if this tenant moves out again and doesn't break the lease i'm right here catching that next wave of rental appreciation now, another thing that I track for the uh, pace of the overall economy is the unemployment rate. Because you can see here in these last couple recessions we had, remember this is 20 years, so you catch the last financial crisis, the Great Recession, and the dot-com bubble of uh, the early 2000s. So you can see how fast this unemployment rate really ticks up when we do have an economic problem. We have had some big jumps over the last couple of years since I've been tracking this where you get a half a percent or a 0.6 percent jump month over month, but it falls back down to where I'm not too worried about if I see a half a percent jump or one percent, and one percent would be kind of concerning, but half a percent month uh, over one month is not that big a deal. But if I see it continuing half a month here, another here, a little bit down, another jump, I'm really going to start to be worried and looking at the other economic indicators to see what is going on that's driving this unemployment and is it going to spill over into real estate and what we do and do we need to adjust our strategy of what we're working towards because if people aren't working that means they're not buying houses and liquidity is possibly drying up and could level off prices or make them fall like we saw after the Great Recession which Keep in mind, real estate takes a while where the stock market fell in a matter of a year, bottomed out, and then took back off. Real estate took three years or more to kind of average out, find its bottom before it started taking back off. So keep that in mind uh, when things start changing, that real estate moves a little slower, but it lasts a little bit longer when things do uh, start to change around. This is the year-over-year -year appreciation since I've been able to track median sales for the data I can get back to uh, 2011 on median sales prices. So you can really see this where I was saying like prices kept falling all the way through 2011 before they took off and they started appreciating again. And it's kind of crazy to me to see that once it was down here and how fast it reversed and took off and stayed up there and has not dropped and the lowest it dropped was down here at about 2% in 2016 if you guys remember there was a little bit of a concern of what was going to go on in the overall economy right there going into uh january of 2016 and this consumer confidence kind of dropped because the stock market was acting very volatile and prices kind of fell down because of that and now i'm going to be curious to see if that does continue with the way October, November, December went of the end of this year with now ending the bull run that's been going on for nine years and the stock market hitting a negative year somewhere between five, seven percent. I'm going to be curious to see in six months if we have see some spillover into the median sales prices here in uh, San Antonio. Um, now, I started tracking the total average from the data that I have of what the average appreciation has been since kind of coming out of the uh, last recession. And our average has been 5.3%. And the average appreciation is about 4% nationally for prices. Obviously, there's been some outliers in that. But we have been kind of going above the average for quite some time. And our 12-month average is actually at 5.7%. So you think about this month 12 month period right here we were sitting down at the three four percent and now we've kind of ticked back up again so that's good it's not too far outside of the norm but it is kind of outside of the norm but with record low unemployment and wages increasing and more and more people moving here that is good support for these kind of numbers to continue or hold steady maybe level off a little bit but not necessarily reverse now the favorite part that I have on this uh, from people and the feedback that I get is where to market in the San Antonio to really capture that appreciation. Now while I say the median sales price 
um, for the whole city is at 210 and the month's inventory is at four, where are the pockets that are higher and lower for that? And I track it by two things. First is by price range, like where's the most indes or desirable price ranges for housing? And you can really see San Antonio has always been right here, the, the affordability of the city compared to our other major metros. It's really at the 200,000 and below rate. Now, during the last summertime, these, the 200 to 250 price range got a lot closer to the 150 to 200, but it's kind of ticked back up. But you can really see that uh, from the 100 to $200,000 price range, this is your affordable housing, entry level, kid, um, somebody working uh, two jobs or one job making 50, 60 grand a year, combined household income, can really afford in this price range. Uh, so there's a lot of inventory and a lot of demand for this. And if you're a realtor and listening to this, uh, I'm a licensed agent myself. If you've ever tried to represent a buyer in these price ranges, especially you get down to that 150 and if it's a good clean house and nothing wrong with it, there you do not have much bargaining power as the buyer's agent to kind of try to negotiate much in concessions or repairs and stuff because the listing agents know that, hey, you put an offer in in three days, we had multiple showings there's no reason for me to kind of give any uh, concessions because if you back out, then I got somebody right behind you to take that position. So this is that price range that uh, is most indesirable. And there's a lot of homes in San Antonio that sell in that hundred to $200,000 price range. And so it's crazy to see that that low of month over month, uh, month's inventory. And that's kind of historically where this price range has always been there. And for us, we try to do the most of our renovations in this 250 under with the occasional jumping out uh, to higher price ranges. But remember that six months of inventory is the balance. And uh, you don't cross over that until you get into the 400 to 500,000 and a half million up here in San Antonio. So there is pressure for prices to continue to increase uh at the 350 and below but obviously that pressure continues to rise the lower and lower you get now i don't look too much at the zero to 50 because not nothing is really qualifying for financing in that 50 you mean sub even a hundred thousand uh there's just the houses are very old need a lot of repairs and with the current lending regulations most houses can't qualify so these are all kind of cash sales that are happening in that price ranges the other way I track is by zip code as well. Like where's the most indesirable place with the lowest months of inventory? Keeping in mind that six month is a balanced market. And then the lower that number gets, the more pressure there is for prices to rise. Now, it's really no surprise uh, based on this previous uh, slide on by price range that the majority of these are in the sub 250 and most of them in that 200 and below of where people need to live. Now, I did start collecting this two years ago. So, and this is my own data that I pull, that the uh, two year, you can kind of see what the appreciation has really been in two years with these low months of inventory of how much some of these areas have come up over that period of time. Now it's like 78233, 107,000 up to 148,000. And that's 40 grand in just two years. I mean, that's a very, very fast appreciation rate for some of these areas. And some of them have come down um, uh, but I'm not as concerned about some of these areas that are in these higher price ranges. So this is something to kind of really take in mind when you're doing your marketing, like where do you market to get the best bang for your buck? Uh, especially if you're buying or if you're doing a flip to keep these months of inventories in mind, not just by price range, but by zip code and neighborhood. Uh, when you're running your comps to see, Hey, if I buy this house now, this is what my comps are, but there might be a chance that the prices do increase in the next year to come or while you're doing that renovation. Now the opposite side of that is the worst zip code. Where's the highest months of inventory where there's the most competition. Now, um, now a lot of these, you can see the except for 78207 and 240, they are in a much higher price range the three, four, five hundred thousand dollar price ranges. And usually the 203, 207, and 204, these are all downtown neighborhoods um, that have historically been kind of uh, outliers. That's why you see some of these price ranges. Keep in mind that the cash sales happen in this kind of price range here. Now, not to say these are bad zip codes. You just really need to be looking at your month's inventory and your competition level if you're flipping in these price ranges and these zip codes and maybe have to spend a little extra to make sure you're not the person sitting on the market for six months trying to sell a house. Because if you're in Alamo Heights 
When you've got a $500,000 hard money loan, that's going to be pretty hard to maintain that principal balance and those interest payments every month. But prices do continue to increase over time. I'm running short on time. got 15 seconds left. Uh, this is John Barr. Uh, if you have any questions, email me at john at primehomes.com. Check us out on Facebook and also look for Investor Journey uh, wherever you like to listen to your podcast to catch our podcast. Till next time. Thanks.